start our webinar on electronic identification building block e residency is only an opportunity for us inter eastern partner countries to use this uh, building block to build e residency services for european citizens so yeah that's regulation i have uh, a second part so that defines explicitly identification services uh, in european union and unfortunately uh, e identification <coughs> inside uh, european union and the EADAS regulation do not have uh, any articles on mutual recognition of other identification schemas outside of European Union so right now within your Eastern uh, partner Eastern partnership countries uh, we can uh, use uh, one directional recognition of EID means from European Union uh, but it's possible to build bidirectional uh, EID uh, identification schemas between our countries and uh, also EADAS regulation right now under uh, revision so maybe in new, new version of EADAS regulation European Union will add uh, articles uh, on how to recognize identification schemas from the third parties um, but uh, right now uh, it has a rather good <coughs> uh, definition of uh, identification schemas and mechanism how to build cross-border uh, authentication within the European Union and potentially with our countries uh, so uh, there is an explicit uh, split within the uh, regulation <coughs> on the mechanism that uh, can be used for identif identification of citizens and it's fully based on national law so there is no explicit requirements uh, how to build uh, identity management system for uh, member states and for third countries uh, this is why here we have a fully functional national based identity uh, system but the main goal of EADAS regulation was to build cross-border authentication when you can be a citizen of Germany and open the business in Estonia using your own EAD uh, card so uh, to do this um, a European Commission introduced uh, th their mechanism called uh, notification of EID schemas uh, so right now in there uh, this um, uh, notification of EID schemas uh, requires for some uh, process that I will talk later uh, to be in place uh, that gives uh, assurance or in trust for the this identification schema within their uh, union so there is uh, no simple process uh, to create EAD schema and use EAD schema within the European Union you must go through this notification process uh, to prove that your um, identification schema is uh, capable to be used uh, around the Union and also there is a uh, very important uh, article that uh, uh, tells ab us about assurance level uh, of their identification schemas so there is no one uh, level of I identification so there is a uh, three levels low substantial and high so for different um, purposes and for different public services or businesses you can use different levels and uh, definition of the requirement level for your pu public services is fully based on the national regulation of the country so uh, you can choose which level you would like to use uh, within your public services uh, and you can use this level or higher so for example if you uh, defined for the substantial 
uh, level for paying taxes, for example, because uh, high level for paying taxes may be uh, uh, not worth it because if someone will pay taxes for you it will be good for your financial health uh, uh, so this service for paying taxes uh, can uh, uh, use substantial or high uh, level uh, of their yeah, identity schemas and also uh, why i'm talking here within this webinar about year residency <laughs> potential for our countries uh, because uh, right now uh, n usage of the notified schemas around the eu is mandatory for all countries within eu f so from 2018 uh, if uh, uh, any country within European Union notifies its schema for e identification, other countries within European Union uh, should trust this uh, uh, EAD schema and should uh, use uh, uh, EADs from uh, member states uh, to provide public services or other services. So th this why it's not a, a theory or draft of law, it's a working mechanism within European Union. So about low, substantial and high level, uh, part of um, uh, formal definition of these levels, we can g tell that low level, it's a simple uh, login and password that we use a lot uh, within our standard login process to the emails, websites and uh, other uh, web assets. A substantial level, suppose that you have uh, two-factor authentication, so a part of user and password, for example, you have a one-time uh, token that you, you will use and another example is a bank ID uh, when this one-time password is in fact <coughs> the password generated by the bank and bank also have a verified identity information in about you uh, because in the low level there is no strict uh, verification process in place uh, so we cannot trust explicitly the identity of the person who claims to be this person and high level uh, here we have uh, mainly three uh, different schemas it's a uh, a mobile ID uh, schema, it's a national ID cards uh, and a lot of national ID cards and schemas is based on biometrics um, uh, standards from ICAO, International Civic Organiza Aviation Organization and uh, digital signature, so qualified certificates for the digital signature also have a high level for the assurance because uh, they used uh, strict uh, uh, procedures of identification of their person uh, who will use these uh, identi identification schemas. And uh, this slide talks about different uh, parts of uh, EAD management and why identification of EAD schema within the Union is rather a complex and hard process and going b direction building b directional uh yay uh, environment rather hard even within our eastern partnership countries because uh, you need to define and build enrollment phase so how you initially identify the person and keep records for this person uh, how you used uh, techniques to authenticate that person <laughs> and uh, uh, all their processes uh, that use uh, that involved in the creation of the digital ind identity and management of this digital identity. So uh, overall it's very similar to this uh, uh, free visa approach that Moldova, Georgia and Ukraine go through 
to to reach the point when we can travel with some restrictions to Euro European countries without visas and uh, this is the next level uh, of this process and this process looks like this so the entity uh, use registration authority uh, to uh, get access to uh, electronic identification means so in bank it's a bank card uh, in the mobile id it's a sim card uh, in uh, e-signature uh, it's a secure signature creation <laughs> device and uh, when the person entity uh, get this means uh, the management of the data within this means usually uh, managed by trusted third party uh, and then relying party like uh, public authorities businesses other citizens uh, can uh, use this uh, mechanism of the electronic identification uh, to uh, authenticate to, to understand and prove the identity of the person who would like to have to to reach uh, the relying party public government to uh, uh, get public services so uh, what benefits of electronic identification the main benefit uh, within the European Union and for uh, building uh, e-residency within our e Eastern Partnership countries is e interoperability, security and trust. Uh, so right now there is explicit um, uh, benefit for all of countries uh, to use this standard approach because it's much easier to negotiate together with the European Union this one directional uh, integration of uh, year ID uh, nodes uh, it's a technical part of year identification schemas with European Union notifi notified schemas uh, so it will be easier for European countries and our countries to negotiate the technical part of uh, uh, their integration between European EAD schemas and and uh, Eastern Partnership countries that, that consu can consume electronic identities from the European countries. The security uh, and trust. So security, uh, it's about uh, levels of assurance. Uh, because in theory our countries uh, as independent countries can set different levels of insurance suppose that bank id right now within european union regulation is uh, substantial have substantial level of assurance but we can set it to to high level and it depends on us but within the european union and between us we must explicitly match the level of assurance uh, to guarantee the high level of security between transactions uh, within the public services and trust uh, in um, uh, our case uh, building e-residency uh, schemas it's uh, a less maybe <laughs> in brackets uh, less important because it's our responsibility to trust and not trust notified EAD schemas but because the schemas is based on international and European standards uh, they have the highest level of trust and also this trust not uh, declarative but uh, the schemas go through the complex pr process of audit uh, and uh, uh, and cyber security audit and gradation audit so uh, it's it's uh, the best way to build trusted notification schemas and the same approach can be used also within our countries so you can migrate or build from scratch identification schemas using CFEAD building block so right now uh, in European Union almost on all countries have their own identification schemas that use within the countries uh, to identify uh, citizens and uh, right now uh, by asterisk uh, ma they're marked countries uh, who 
uh, in process of implementing a DAS compilement node. And asterisk uh, mark the countries who we, who we plan to use Ceph EAD sample implementation uh, to be built EA DAS compliant node. And this EA DAS uh, node is a cr critical part of this cross border integration between EAID schemas uh, in European Union. So we, we can say that almost all, <laughs> a, a lot of countries within European Union. Uh, uh, is using the CFEAD building block to build cross-border uh, identification uh, mechanism within the European Union. And the uh, uh, building block is uh, responsible for uh, identity, uh, identify, to build this technical mechanism to exchange of uh, uh, identity between their countries. So on this slide uh, there is a sem uh, sample process for identifying the uh, citizens that try uh, to use a service uh, from uh, a other country. So the uh, user is a citizen of country, country A and uh, he she tries to use um, a public service from the country B. So in this case uh, the user will uh, try to use service provider of his her own country. This provider will connect to Yeda's node that will identify that uh, a user would like to use uh, uh, service for the country B. Uh, this EADAS node will uh, proxy the request for identification to the other country. Uh, this other country uh, will use uh, identity provider to identify the person and this person uh, identity will, will uh, go back to the service provider who will uh, use this identity from other country to provide the service to this person. So this mechanism when the citizen of the country will use he, his uh, her uh, local country identity mechanism will be in place. So in their practice, for example, if a German citizen will use uh, public service in Moldova, uh, and Moldova will trust notified schema for EID in Germany. This German citizen will use German website to prove their uh, his her identity. <coughs> and after receiving this proof of identity, a German notified schema will send this proof to the Moldova public services and public service will trust this uh, identity from the German notification schema to provide public service to, uh, to the German citizen. So uh, it's a so-called federation of e-identities mechanism built within this EADAS node. So right now it's a uh, demo time. <coughs> so here I have uh, two countries, uh, country A and country C. And we'll try to log in to the country A with country C citizen uh, country. So right now uh, citizen uh, from the country C try to use a uh, uh, service from the country A. When we try to use uh, this mechanism we explicitly have three steps on which we can understand which data from the citizens this public service try to use. Also uh, uh, when we, we start this process we can choose the level of assurance as I told you from the highest to the lowest level. And when we go through the process of um, uh, authentication, so proofing our identity to the third party service, we can understand that 
the service requesting attributes like first name, family name, date, date of birth, and on the step, if you would like not to share your some sensitive data with the service, you can cancel this process of identification. Uh, next, uh, after the core attributes, uh, uh, there is maybe need for their other attributes uh, from your legal or uh, personal data, like for example legal entity identifier, if you will uh, open a, a new business, branch business uh, in uh, Eastern Partnership countries, for example, and you can share this information with uh, the public service. After this, you, after selecting which data is required and which data you would like to share with public services, you must claim your uh, identity to the, your local provider, identity provider with, in this case, a, a login and password, but it can be any mechanism like mobile ID, your ID card, your digital signature, etc. So implementation of identity provider in each case can be differ dif different and um, uh, in the end the proxy needs uh, true or false for in I identity of this person and plus metadata data that uh, will be shared with third-party services and after going through this identification uh, right now is the, is this uh, last step that your data will be sent uh, to their uh, third-party service uh, we submit this data and have a successful login with your shared data w with uh, in other country so this sample uh, implementation gives you ability uh, to build bi bidirectional and one directional flows of identifier the citizens uh, from other countries in your country with standard approach that is built within the CFEID building block. And also this process have limitations because in EU there is a regulation that define this procedure and mechanism and building um, uh, this federation with other countries may be hard but this approach proves be more flexible and trustworthy than others and also this um, uh, <laughs> Uh, a field of building uh, trusted EADs between the countries rather than you. So I hope in new revision of EADAS regulation we will have explicit mechanism of trusting third party notified EAD schemas uh, to the European Union. That's all, colleagues, maybe questions.